and welcome everybody to yet another cast. This time, once again, we're going to be looking at some VTL Pro action. It's going to be Risen versus Valid Gaming. <clears throat> and spawning in the bottom left-hand corner, I have him added so it says something different, but this is November. It is the Validity Gaming Protoss November. And up in the top right-hand corner, representing Risen, this is the green Terran player. It is Ricer J. So, you might be wondering, why is Ricer playing first? Well, we are um, due to Amateur. That's going to be starting up soon. We are playing uh, one of the Masters slots first. So it is going to be that. Up next, we will have our Diamond slot, and then the M3 slot, and then the other Master slot, followed by the M1 Plus slot. <clears throat> So again, this is not all kill. This is not all kill. All of these guys are going to be playing one map. All five maps will be played, and we will see what the scoreline uh, goes to. So it looks like it's going to be the Gateway Cyber into expansion here for November. I'm doing a little Proby Pro Parass as well. Nothing too crazy to start this off. And in fact, November. Not, obviously not with no second gas. Not doing anything crazy. Just gonna take that, um... I don't know what that means in chat, but... Welcome. Not gonna be doing anything crazy, and both these guys look like they are starting things out quite normally. We're going to be looking very soon to see what that first tech building of our Protoss player is. Well, thank you, safety scissors. This is annoying. Ah, uh, as a Protoss player, personally, cannot stand when this happens. Um, this can really mess with you. Especially if you go Adept first here, because obviously the Adept not going to be very good at clearing out the bunker. And it can really lock down the um, the mining at your natural for a hot minute. Especially with a sentry following this up. Like, neither of these are really good building killers. I think the best response here... There we go. Perfect. Just to get that shield battery down, get a stalker out. And let that, that healing kind of um, be your opportunity to get this bunker dealt with. <clears throat> but still quite annoying. It is going to be a robo first here out of November. Zoop. He's got a Marine here too. Did he walk a Marine across the map? What a, what a lad. What a mad lad. Walked a Marine across the map. And, oh, can he shoot that? Oh, actually, this is really nice. He can shoot it from the high ground. Okay. I think if that's like one hex over, he can't. Um, but this is actually really, really nice. Um, allows him to not even have to waste too much damage on this shield battery. This Nexus, not in any danger of going down. Second Stalker coming out now, and he can start double firing at it. Again, with the healing, though, this is going to block him up. But again, you see the um, what's good about this. He should have a lot of probes on mining here, and he does not right now. There's the transfer. Bunker's going to get salvaged. The Marine is going to run home. Will the Marine make it home is the question. He's hoofing it. And it actually looks like he will. Cyclone coming out here. Yes, did we see blink? Or, no, we haven't. We've not seen what the, um, if it's going to be blink or charge first. I would guess blink. I know I like blink. But there's the next two gateways following it up. And there we go. Blink starts dropping the chrono. So everything is looking very, very normal. These blink openings are very popular because they're very defensively sound. Having blink stalkers. Apocalypse <laughs> sent me 69 bits. Thank you. I like it. <laughs> um, because they're very defensively sound, they deal with a lot of things, drops very well, um, and they afford you tools to get aggressive as well. There's actually more gateways coming in. Four gateways on top of... Oh, there's only one down. So it's going to be five gateways. Which could read that it's going to be that... Um, ooh. It's a probe there, that's nice. It could read that it's going to be that parting-esque style, especially with the prism coming out. It really reads that, where you, you know, you're not totally all-in, just trying to kill him, but it does allow you to 
to keep the pressure on and get a lot of damage done. I mean, with good control, parting has shown just how dangerous this build can be. Now, it looks like it could be Cloaked Banshees coming up, and that actually is not going to play very well into the hands of our Terran player. Now, having this Raven here will be nice if he can get a catch on these Observers. Um, but this is a tough build, and with, like, a mech opening here, especially one that with very detectable Banshees, like, there's not a lot... Not a lot of meat on the bones of this Terran army, and with a lot of Stalkers coming across the map, if November can get a read on this, he can get some serious damage done here. Turret coming up in the natural as well. Not sure what that's for, as he already has the Raven, but three CCs, double factory on the way, but it's going to be a minute here before Ricer, his build really kicks in here. Which means that, ooh, are we going to see the blink in? This is a great tank spot, by the way. This is a wonderful tank spot for against something like this. Now the tank of the natural as well. Gonna start shelling away. Third Nexus goes down as I think November reads that he's not going to get like a crazy amount of damage done here. He can keep the pressure on, he can delay that third base. Oh, wait, did that get canceled? Wait. I thought he threw it down. That's weird. Oh, bleeds out a stalker as well. But again, there's the third Nexus. The third CC is done here for Ricer. He, it's going to be a minute, I think, before he has, you know, the tank spread good enough that he can really push out. I think Ricer could totally... He probably doesn't see it. No, it's not detected. Um, but if it was, he could just run forward and kill that with the Cyclone, I think. Um, oh, yeah, there we go. That's a nice pick. Ooh, don't want to lose that Raven. But now the Banshees are heading out on the map here to start to get aggressive. <laughs> Please roast never more. Nah, dude, I will never... I can't roast my Protoss babies, dude. They're my friends. We have to stay unbiased. But here we see Colossus coming out. And um, this is the thing with playing Mech versus Protoss. Is that no one thinks you're going to play Mech versus Protoss. And so you see a lot of people that are going to react like it's Bio. For example, plus one armor. Not something you want versus Mech. Colossus. Probably not a priority of something you would want versus Mech. And here we go. Let's see how much damage these Banshees can get done. Three go down, but he had to cloak early, which means he pretty much runs out of energy. Eight probes in total for the two Banshees. That's not too bad, um, especially with the kill on both of those Banshees there for our Protoss player. But again, still, um, like I said, plus one armor. Definitely a move that's like armor upgrades are great against um, Marines. And Marauders, things that fire really fast and, you know, like I said, have that high attack speed. Not so great against things like tanks. Um, and the longer it goes without you identifying this... Now, obviously, the big gateway ball is still very good against mech, but... The longer that it goes without you identifying this, the more of a problem it can be for the Protoss. Because if he knows that it's mech, he wants to be taking, like, a fourth right now. Um, he probably wants a second Robo up so he can really chug, chug out those Immortals a little bit more. Um, and then eventually, obviously, transition into the Disruptors, which are so, so important. Um, but as it stands, um, I guess we do see Disruptors coming out, but he's not... He's he's still playing this as if it's Bio, and, you know, you, you can't really blame him, because 90, 95% of Terran players play Bio in this matchup. It is not common that you're going to face someone who's going to mech against you in TVP. Um... But if you're not looking at it and you, you build the wrong composition, you can kind of get caught with your pants down a little bit. As that tank count we see is going to continue to grow. And Ricer's being allowed to just kind of sit back, get up everything he wants, and really go for it here. The fourth base is on the way for him as well. Get, starting to get that Hellbat count up as well, or Hellion, but likely they will be turned into Hellbats. And the Hyper Flight Rotors, one of the things that is so, so scary that we've seen Ricer J do in this matchup is, you know, whenever he sees the Protoss out on the map, he does that Hyper Flight Rotors counterattack, where there'll be five or six Banshees that any time you're out of position, you know, there's enough Banshees there that they just kind of shred through cannons, and they will just go to town on your workers. He's going to move over here and take the fourth base. Now, this could be a moment where this army has an opportunity to get an awful lot done. 
Especially if he's caught on siege here. There's the siege up. And with this depot here, he sees this attack coming. But now with all those tanks sieged, he's got some disables as well. I think he should be able to lock this down even before this turns into a planetary. And at this point, I think the jig is up for um, Ricer. His opponent definitely knows that this is mech. Where are those disables? It looks like it's going to be an anti-armor army missile. Anti -armor missile. As here we go, these zealots are getting largely cleaned out. Needs a good disruptor shot here. Is going to try and get onto the tanks. Takes out one of them. There's the blink in. The tank line doesn't go back that far. And it looks like November's really starting to make some progress. So actually, here we go as these tanks really start to clear this out. Now there's no more zealots. It's just these two Colossus. And the tanks do have a range advantage, even on Colossus. And that fourth phase stays up. And that was an awful lot of army to lose, especially considering... We do not see a fourth base yet from our Protoss player, meaning that this is not really sustainable. Um, he's trying to assault the fourth without his... There we go. There's the fourth base. But, I mean, economically right now, our Terran is very, very happy. Very, very happy. I like this play. Ooh. Warpism goes to the main with two disruptors. Okay, he gets the drop off and will recall the disruptors. That's very, very good. That could have been disastrous if he just lost that, but... barracks. DTs and Blink coming up, but again, one of the mainstays of this type of style is a lot of static defense, a lot of turrets everywhere. So, he's going to have to pick his angle of attack very, very well to get much damage done with the DTs, to be honest. So here we go, we see more depots. Just this super strong defensive spread, and you know, this isn't a full wall, but it all just kind of jumbles an attack, right? It's meant to Make it difficult to attack into tanks. I would like it to be a full wall, though. That would be better. So we even see Yamato. Two BCs on the way as well. As here we go. This is the hit squad. Cloaks as soon as he crosses there. I don't know if November got eyes on that. But again, this is enough Banshees that you just really don't care about the cannon. He's actually going to dive into the natural. And there's nothing here that shoots up. Oh, is there anything on the map that shoots up? No, he scans. He sees nothing. You could go on the army there, man. You could go on the army if you wanted to. Not going to do that. Going to go for economy here and kill this cannon. Stalkers are going to get warped in now. But this is gutting to the econ economy of the Protoss. Twenty-four probes go down, putting him at forty-two workers to eighty-one. He scans over here, sees the base, and you have to think that that's going to be a priority target for him here. Could even wait for a, uh, a moment where the, a lot's going on and just warp a BC over there. That could get a lot of damage done. This one Marine. Going to kill this pylon. And again, this is just going to get really hard to break now as Ricer is getting all his bases up. One, two, three, four, five bases. That's a, that's a lot of stuff that you can have. He's now approaching maxed. And... November is posturing, probably looking for a fight, but there's not a lot of sturdiness in this army. I mean, he's got a fair few zealots, a bunch of blink DTs that have high damage potential, but if they're detected, I mean, they are going to get pew pewed pretty quickly here. And even, like, if he targeted the stalkers, like, the banshees might be able to overrun this. How many banshees are there? Eight? Yeah. Eight banshees to five stalkers favor that one for the Banshees. Here we go. Once again, November looking for an angle here, but I just don't know if it exists. He might be able to hit this base. That would be a really nice spot to hit. More DT is getting warped in here. But Scan's going down. He knows how many are there. And, oh, immediately dag... Like I said, he sees the Protoss out on the map. What do you do? You dagger him at that exposed base. And this is absolutely economically gutting. I think November knows he needs to go here, and I just can't imagine this working out too well. Look how far back. That's a huge DT blink, but so many of them are getting cleared out here. The scan goes down. He's got the detection. God is immortal is pretty far forward, but Yamato going down on the disruptors. GG is called Ricer J. Is going to take a map win here for Risen. I'm going to throw up to Overlay, and we're going to be right back with our next match. Keep it locked. And we are back, everybody. 
And let's get right on into things again. This is our diamond match spawning up in the top left-hand corner. The orange Terran player. Representing Validity Gaming. It is Cali. And down in the bottom right-hand corner. The teal Terran player representing Risen. It is Savior. So, I think personally, well, at least I, when the season started, right, I looked at Romanticide, and I was like, I don't think I ever want to play this map against Terran. The reason for that being, like, this just seems like such a siegeable spot. Um, obviously, you've got all this high ground for tanks for defending your third, right? You can put a tank here, and, like, this attack path, as well as, like, defending deeper into your third is defended. So I'm actually okay that we get a TVT on this map, because it, it reads to me, and I could be wrong here, I haven't, I haven't really played it much, this was just like my gut reaction of, at looking at it, I think I banned it after that, because I was like, never want to play Terran here. Um, is it reads to me like a map that's pretty good for Terran, I'm not surprised that a Terran picked it. Um, but we are going to get a TVT on that, and what is the counter for Terrans? Other Terrans! <laughs> Can certainly be a volatile matchup. There are a lot of openings that can catch you off guard. And then the game kind of changes a lot, where uh, attacks can be quick, brutal, and short, with obviously the way that tanks interact with other units, namely blowing them up very quickly. Um, but it's going to be the double gas opening here from Cali. A little bit of a delayed second gas here from Savior. So it's going to be a faster CC here for Savior. But the faster factory here from Cali is the trade-off. Savior's SCV scouting with his expansion to just make sure that he is not, in fact, getting, um, like, proxy reaper or anything. That's a nice little block off. He does deny the scouting. Although seeing the um, the factory and the, uh, the barracks, you, you can probably intuit what's going on there. Probably so. Does pull out of gas here, does Cali. So not going to be any um, crazy commitment to tech here. Going to poke up with the Reaper. But just going to get... Go up a ramp into another Reaper and get forced back. And it is going to be that Hellion Reaper style that can cause so much trouble in the early game. There is a tech lap. I'm guessing that uh, Savior himself is going to be beelining for a Cyclone here. That would be my, my guess. Um, as that can be a little bit of a game changer in those early engagements, um, right, right when it's all Reapers and Hellions, nothing there is very sturdy, then puts out a ton of consistent damage, but we, he could have a dicey moment here before that's out. It looks like there are two Reapers and a Hellion, um, sharking around, and right now it's just this Reaper, two Marines, and he's waiting on that Cyclone. This Reaper, not going to last long. And now he, he really has to wait for the Cyclone, and that could cost him a fresh mule and a couple SCVs. Nice pick off there for Cali. Now, again, the cost of this is the later CC. Um, so, I th honestly, I think this should probably about even out. Because, um, you, you know, you're never going to bust through this. As soon as the Cyclone's out, I think that spells the end of that. Going to get another SCV, though. That's nice. Here comes the Cyclone. Going to lock onto the Hellion. Should get the kill. Does. More units coming in now, but with that... Um, Hellion dying, I don't think he has enough to, to break this, so he's going to back out. Maybe, yeah, use these Reapers to rotate around and try and get into the main. That's a cool play. Behind this, we do see another Cyclone coming up. And that's what's nice about this Reaper-Hellion combo, is that you can run in to the natural with the Hellions, you can jump around with the Reapers. Third CC coming up here. But this Cyclone should be enough to deflect this attack, but he will get his third CC scouted almost immediately here. And delayed a little bit. As it looks like Callie's just going to go around and get the full scout here. Those Reapers do get cleared up, though. Okay, I was going to say, if we saw no Ravens, I was going to be like, what is this? Is this even TVT? No Ravens? That would have been crazy. But we are going to see the Raven production begin, I would expect, from Savior. Cali ahead in that regard. Third CC on the way for Cali as well. So they are not too far behind in that third CC, especially with the little delay that they got with that Reaper attack. 
And now I'm guessing we're going to see the game slow down a little bit. Both these players opting for that third CC. This is a little bit of the gear up phase of the game where, you know, as we can tell, no one, no one really has the army to attack each other, especially into tanks. And they're both getting third CCs, so they're both adding on production, both getting up these, like, tech units that will gain them value over time, not really gearing for anything that's going to um, try and end the game. It looks like this one uh, might be geared to go for the long haul. Oh, the Ravens might pass each other. <laughs> Whoop! Zoop! As he's going to need to be careful here with this Raven. Does not want this Cyclone to lock on and get a kill here. Yep, he's going to see that and back out. Well done there by Callie. Both players getting that double engineering bay up, starting up stim at almost exactly the same time. Looks like Callie a little bit more on top of the SCV production by about a round or so, especially since Savior did have that second CC up a little faster. 1-1 one, one starting here for Callie. Savior really needs to get that 1-1 one, one going. The bigger of a window where you are down on upgrades. Obviously the worse things are. And in Marine versus Marine fights, that can make a huge difference. There's the 1-1. One, one. So here we go. A little bit of harassment here. Let's see what he can get done with this. One, two, three, four workers. Not a bad haul there that will bring the worker lead into Savior Savior. And actually, there's another Raven hitting the natural. There's a tank here. So it's going to be six workers in total that do get picked off there. Oh, I think I just have to turn the music higher. I uh, don't think you're going to get that tank, bro. Nope. Just going to damage it a little bit. That's going to get repaired on up. As, yeah, like I said, I mean, little little pokes and prods everywhere with those with the Raven Harass, but largely both players just gearing up here. And I doubt we're going to see much get decided until that first big engagement, because the, the margins between these players right now are very, very slim, which means if one player gets their first tank volley off first or, you know, has a little bit of a terrain advantage in the fight, that is overwhelmingly going to be what decides it less like... um. Any sort of, like, uh, commanding army side at this point in the game. Let's look like Savior's the one that wants to get a little bit of aggressive here. Actually, both of them. Both of them. Well, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Who knows? Both of them are, like, running forward and going back. I don't know, guys. We're just going to watch and see what happens. <laughs> There's the scan going down. Let's take a look at the tank count. It is six tanks to four? Okay. A slight marine advantage as well. Two Vikings in the sky here for Cali. And obviously, air upgrade or air control, super super critical in TVT. So the question is, is what will be the point of assault here? So scan there says I probably don't want to attack up a ramp into that, but there might be another angle for me. Say for sending some marines out, they will probably run into their death. But well, that'll be worth it to know where the army is. Ooh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Why is your army in medevacs? He's going to see that drop. If you need to get your units out of the medevacs, man, you need to get your units out of the medevacs. There's a disable. Okay, okay. That could have been very, very bad. Not sure why the units were in medevacs there. It looked like he was considering a doom drop, but would not have been a good time to do that. 
Again, once again, getting the more on top of the upgrades here is our Validity Gaming Terran. That's going to be a pretty large window of 2-2 two -two here for him. As the rotation is occurring, keeping Savior on his toes. Oh, Savior's not sieged up here. This could be really bad. He needs to get sieged. There we go. He's got the high ground advantage. There's a scan going down. Big shots. Where's that drop? Drop is landing in the background. Oh, he should go for the upgrades. I think he should go for the upgrades here. As he's got this front locked down as the supply is plummeting a little bit here for our orange turn player. Those are nice disables. He's going to try and dive on the tanks. I think he can get them too. One, two, go down. And things are falling apart very, very quickly for our orange Terran player here in this sequence of events. All those tanks get cleared out. Not really picking great targets, but still this drop getting enough done. Going to dive on this tank as well. That's a great pick. Six SCVs have gone down, and with how much army got lost as well, this is not... This was not a good uh, sequence of events there for Cali. As this base is a planetary, but is now exposed, taking a look at that tank count. Now it's 11 tanks to 3. That is a huge tank advantage. Now keep in mind the Marine upgrade lead is there for Cali. 2-2 two, two to 1-1. One, one. That's a big advantage. Oh, but a tank or two on this high ground could be devastating. Savior needs to get some of his tanks sieged up as here comes Cali. Got to run in, try and look for some hits on the tanks. Oh, devastating shots on the retreat though. Savior's going to dive on this planet here. Will the repair be enough? That's the question. It's going to be close. No, it is not going to be close. That base goes down. Locking down the fourth while securing a fourth of his own. Three, three, starting up right now. That is the key advantage of our orange Terran player having the upgrade lead and keeping it. And it looks like Kelly will keep the upgrade lead. What is going to be a problem here is a the army supply and b the base count um, down a base and with an army that needs to take uh, like a good terrain fight or you know catch his opponent out a little bit here because the in terms of raw numbers. It's about half of the tank count, less than half the tank count, and down pretty significantly Marines as well. Now, the Vikings are there, obviously. Um, they can provide like a, that dimension of air control for the army. But in terms of raw mass, you have to be so careful in TVT when you're wandering around with the smaller army because you can just get walked up, sieged on. And at that point, things can go wrong very quickly. Savior's going to move out. Looks like for a double drop against a base that is not even done yet. Looks like that's going to finish up and probably float over. Actually would like to see this base taken. I think that's maybe a little more defensible here. And it is going to be that one. I like I like that decision. There's a tank in here too. Turrets getting set up along the main base to prevent any of those drops from going into the main. Scans going down all over the place to keep an eye on each other. As Savior is now maxed out and probably going to start looking to do some attacking. Um, typically when you max out, that's what makes sense to do. Start trading things out. Uh, these guys are scanning around trying to find each other's armies. Now, bear in mind right now, the air control is definitely in Cali's favor. But this could be a really rough spot if he gets sieged up here. Going to put three tanks back here as part of the siege line. A few over here. And there's the rest of the big siege up. As this is in range of the command center. And this puts Kali in a really tricky spot here. Looks like these medevacs are going to fly into the main where there's turrets. So that's probably not going to go too well for him. And actually bleeding out a lot of units on the side as well. Needs to get these units dropped. Oh. That's a lot of supply down the drain. He's actually doom dropping into the natural as well. Stuff going on all over the place here. As I'm not really sure that this was a great call here from Savior, he just lost a ton of army supply very, very quickly, as we might have seen this game swing once again. Now again, he is mining more, but these are unsupported tanks. Vikings could fly up. 
and really start to cause him some trouble. Oh, here we go. Is the base going to die? Base does not die. Yeah, there's the Liberator. Savior desperately needs to support these tanks, otherwise he's going to get stimmed into. He's going to try and run away, but he's going to bleed out a lot of tanks on the exit here. Needs to get this group of units up with his army, and these tanks are sitting ducks here for the Marines. They are trying to run, but they don't really have a great place to run to. There's no entrenched position here. He's going to group up with these units. And this planetary needs to back up with the tanks. There's the big siege up. Callie's going to go for it. There's the repair. But again, this Liberator, air control and the Liberator being absolutely essential here, going to pick off these tanks and force this fourth base back. Take a few tanks with, with it on the retreat. Ravens coming in now. I don't like that decision at all here from Savior. There's so many Vikings in the air. I don't really see how these Ravens are going to get a lot of value here for him. He needs Vikings more than anything to reach parity in that air war so that this Liberator cannot just force his units back here. He's going to run up, try and get the Liberator, gets the Lib. But there's the big drop on the Vikings. T clears out the tanks, and now it's pure Marine. That's a big gun siege of the tanks. Needs to be very, very careful here. This is getting crazy here. The Vikings are starting to come out here for Savior, but again, so many more Vikings here for Kali, who's now getting a fifth base up behind this as well. Looks like a drop could be coming into the main here. There is a Cyclone here. So that's actually a little bit of a missed opportunity. Two, only two Marines making it out here, but so much damage being forced here on the repair. Savior needs to f pick a time and a place to try and jump on this army and clear out this entrenched position. Here we go. Oh, this is just so devastating. He might, no, he's not gonna clear this out even. The tank line holds here for Cali. And I think that is going to be that here. Those Vikings do get cleared out, but again, at what cost? These tanks are all in the red. But here's the Marine support, and I just don't think that there's enough here for Savior. That last tank gets cleared. That base gone as well. Ravens are still coming in, but again, not what he needs to turn the tide at this point. Just not enough here on the ground, and Cali is going to get a wicked siege up spot here. Savior's going to go for it. But in the face of overwhelming numbers, I think he's going to have to tap out here in a moment. Fifty-six SCVs have gone down. As Savior is out of money, there is no more money on the field here for him. G G is called as Cali is going to bring us back to parity. And tie things up one to one. I'm going to throw overlay up once more as we get into game number three. So keep it locked. We will be back with more StarCraft action. And we are going to get in to our third game here. We are tied 1-1. One, one. Oh, I forgot to put myself on busy. Um, spawning in the bottom left-hand corner here. The Teal Zerg player. It is New Breed. And in the top right-hand corner. The blue, the red, bleh, the red blue Terran. What am I even saying? I'm trying to think while talking. It's not going well. Not going well. Um, the blue Terran player representing Validity Gaming. It is P and Keel, which is a very clever name. We are going to have to see what unfolds here on Pillars of Gold. ZVT, my personal favorite matchup. And I'm hoping we get a nice one here. Oh, 
But so far, nothing out of the ordinary really coming up here from either of these guys. There's the pool going down here for New Breed. And a Reaper expand from our Terran. And we are about to see the Reaper dance that we see in like every game ever. Or at least every ZVT ever. Really, the first thing of note, considering the openers, that we are going to be looking for is the follow-up from our Terran player. What build slash aggression are they going to really be wanting to go for? Expecting to see a reactor? There it is. Making reactor Hellion the most likely thing that is going to come out here. As the Reaper is going to dance around, the third base did go down here, so none of the blocking shenanigans is going to occur. We'll have to see what he can get, if anything, here. Looks like it's just going to be the full scout, but again, that's what you really want from the Reaper. Uh, damage is kind of a bonus, typically. Um, but getting that information, seeing that he's pulled out of gas, seeing the timing of the third, all of that is really what you're looking for most here. Tumorous getting dropped all over the place here. Ooh, it's going to be a Marauder Hellbat, I think. Okay, these builds can be brutal to deal with. The aim, obviously, you get a couple Marauders, deal very well with Zerglings. Or, sorry, Hellbats deal very well with Zerglings. Marauders, obviously, add a lot of beef and can slow down the Queens, help those Marauders, or help those Hellbats deal with them. Um, and you really need a decent queen count. You need to get some banelings up. All of that is of crucial importance in stopping something like this. Um, and if you don't see it coming and you don't have those tools, it's something that can kill a third base and even end the game. So we are going to be on the lookout for what is going on here. These Hellions are going to run in. They're going to get three drones right off the bat. That's a nice initial pick off. Six more starting up as this armory is on the way. As again, I don't think we have a bailing nest out. That is a little problematic here. He's going to get in. He's going to see the Marauders is new breed, and that needs to prompt a response from him here. Lairs on the way. Because pure Zergling is going to really, really struggle to defend this. And right now there's only six links on the map. There's the Baneling list. It is not going to be in time. He needs more Zerglings. He needs every queen that he's got at the front right now. Well, this is going to be absolutely devastating to try and hold here. There's the Hellbat transformation. 14 more links starting. But here's the Marauders. And I just... Ah! I think this is going to kill him, man. I think this is going to kill him. Um... We'll have to see how well the Queens can get into position here, but with no Banelings here, I just really struggle to see how you stop this. He's going to target the Medivac. He's going to get it. That's good, but again, like no amount of Zerglings is going to punch through this Hellbat line. 28 more on the way, but no, with, again, no Banelings. Really needs to keep this drone count protected here. A few volleys do go off. It looks like most of the drones stay alive here. Baneling speed starts. He needs to get back and make sure he gets some of those Banelings morphing up here. Ooh, some of the Hellions are actually, or some of the Hellbats are turning back into Hellions here. This is a decent enough collapse trying to get onto the Marauders. There's some of the Hellion, uh, sorry, the Banelings getting morphed in here. But this natural hatchery is very low on health here. As P and Keel is going to kill that. There's another one coming up on the left hand side, but most of those Banelings get cleared up as well. And he's even going to target them down. As I think New Breed has just bled out a little bit too much here. Another Medivac joins the fight. As 
So this base coming under fire as well. It is going to go down. Baneling's coming in. Get some decent connections here, but again, at this point, two hatcheries have gone down, as this is going to be absolutely brutal to try and uh, salvage a hold from. Drones are fighting the Hellions. That's a little disastrous here. Newbury just getting caught a little bit too early without the Banelings. He's now down to one hatchery. He's done everything he can, but at this point, P and Keel has switched over. He's getting a transition ready, and he has done more than enough damage. Speed Banes are nice, though. Are going to get some decent hits for him as he will shove this back. Oh, actually, maybe he won't. Because actually, there's more Hellbats on the way. And it's going to be a mech follow-up as well. Zerglings bleeding on in here. As this tide of Marauder Hellbat just will not be stopped here. Two more Banes. There's the Liberator Siege up as well. More Banelings. <laughs> it's getting a Spore as well, but again, the Hellions are just going to go harass this. Barbecue. Oof. The barbecue. As he's going to go in for one last ditch effort with the Banelings. Gets a decent enough hit, but it's just not enough here. The Marauders stand strong. <laughs> He's gonna pull the GG is called. P and Keel is gonna take it and get us at two to one. Again, we're gonna have a quick break here. This one, I promise, will be a little bit or should be a little bit shorter than the other one. We'll be right back with the next. Good luck. Not enough minerals. Not enough minerals. Minerals now. Get them. Not enough minerals. Minerals, now! 
get him. Not enough minerals. Minerals now. Get him. To our enemies. Unacceptable warp location. Zero back. Cry. The skies await. I spoke to the stars. Time for battle. Azul engaging the enemy. Finished learning. I mean, no, you can't warp them. Whoops. I wanted a sentry, no. That's actually good, he didn't get into my main with that. No, I don't want that yet. Not enough minerals. Minerals, now! Get him! Not enough minerals. I got him with that one. Minerals, now! Get him! Not enough minerals. Not enough energy. I should have a forge, and I do not. That's a problem. I am eager to strike. That is a problem. Okay. So right there. Let's do that too. Our plus one is going to be behind. That's not good, but you know. Not enough minerals. Minerals now. We can't miss Kronos on our upgrades now because we are a silly, silly boy who forgot his forge. Need a tad bit more energy. Research complete. Unacceptable warp location. Mineral field depleted. This is like the most passive PvP ever. No one's killed each other yet. We're really even gone. Okay, so that's a prism. Would not shock me if. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Might want to get aggressive here. Let's make sure we have a battery. The 
minerals have up and gone. Mineral field depleted. Had that earlier. We are the blade. That needs to be done. Minerals now. We embrace the glory of battle. Not the pro base is under attack. Okay, that's good. That's good. Oh, that's fucked. Um... Oh, I hit just as many of my own units there, I think. Our pylons under attack. Consciousness okay, I need to clean this and go. I mean, no. Did I not remake this? Shit. Should have done that. We need more artosis pylons. You must construct additional pylons. Your forces are under attack. I lost that. That sucks. Minerals now. The minerals have been gone. That was a nice hit. The minerals have up and gone. Justice, we are one with the presiding. Mineral field depleted. Okay, 
I think we've done it. I think. Jeez, wow. Peep hand corner here on Death Aura. The blue Zerg player. It is Thor. Spawning down in the bottom right hand corner here on Death Aura. The red Zerg player. It is Fish. I know it looks like it's Fish, but it's Fish. Whew. So I'll be honest, like I said, my heart is still a pounding after that last match. It was a good one. Classic PvP. Sorry that it was only from one perspective, but, you know, what are they looking at? Um, we're going to be looking at the openings here. It looks like a double hatch first here from both these guys. So no 12 pull shenanigans. That's obviously the first thing that you're looking at in a ZVZ. It's like, well, is anybody going to 12 pull the other guy? Um, nope. Double 16 pulls. And as we see, their build orders are pretty much exactly mirrored here. So we will be looking at, or looking for, our first deviations in build order. And when they come. Oh, there it is. Gas. About 0.4 seconds faster. That's a big deal. No, it's not. Pool. About 0.4 seconds faster. So again, these openings are essentially the exact same thing. Um, which is not surprising in a mirror matchup, especially if these guys are both playing a more standard style, which it looks like they are. And that's good. I, for, I've always been torn on ZVZ. I think it can be a really fun match, but it can also be... Or matchup, I also think it can be a, a really boring matchup, and it kind of depends. Like, you'll see a lot of ZVZs that just end with, like, the 12-pool shenanigans or, like, a Ling Flood. And not, nothing against doing that. I just, from a viewing perspective, it's, it's never really enticed me. But, on the other hand, right, I think ZVZ, once you get into the mid-game, is actually a super, super exciting and dynamic matchup um, that I personally really enjoy. Um... You know, especially, I think, ZVZ in the um, the era of, like, your Rainers and Serials, at least at the pro level, has reached its, like, um, its renaissance, where we've kind of evolved past a lot of the, the sneaky, sly stuff, again, at the pro level, and evolved a little bit more into these, like, really interesting, cool games where you see, like, burrowed roaches going everywhere. Does someone go mutas? Does the other player not go mutas? There's counterplay in between. Sometimes it, it's just, like, really fun and dynamic to watch. So I'm excited that we are going to be more gearing towards that stage of the game, it looks like. As if, once again, both these guys taking mirror third base. They must have signed an agreement. They're like, all right, 236 thirds. Okay, that works for me. 236 thirds. Okay, uh, we're getting Baneling Nests. Oh. Well, the first difference. Baneling Nests coming up. Oh, wait, nope, there it is. Yep, Baneling Nests at around 250. Baneling Nests at around 250. These four Zerglings are going to make a move against this hatchery. Can't imagine that they're going to get it. Just soften it up a little bit as this Overlord gets pushed back by the Queen. More Zerglings showing up, and that is going to spell the end of that little poke there from Fish. Is going to save the Overlord, that's nice. Losing an Overlord early. Sucks. Okay, that's a lot of Zerglings coming out. Um, maybe looking to capitalize on that little bit of chip damage that he got done at the third. Two Banes. But he's... Oh, he's morphing them. He is morphing them across the map, so that he might be getting a little a little aggressive here. Because here we go. The Zerglings are going to come across the map here. Here come the Zerglings for Thor. As, ooh. Ooh, this could be... He might try and send the Banelings at the natural while the Zerglings at the third. This could get strange very quickly. Ooh. First Baneling gets a pretty good connection. These two sharking around looking for opponent Banelings. They're going to blow up those two. And now it's just Zerglings on the field. There's 20 Lings on the way, but they're not here just now. And that means that this base could be under some serious threat here. Here come those reinforcements. So he's not going to be able to clear this out. Thor deflects that and keeps himself at a little bit of a worker lead there. Or, no, actually, it's the other way around. But it's two workers, so... All in all, it looks like it, it looks like it comes out pretty even. A little bit of counter aggression coming here, but with defender's advantage and two more banelings on the way, um, like the the armies are even enough that I don't really think this will get much done. Probably just gonna poke in see if he can get a drone or two on the hunt for those banelings, but not going to be able to get them. Here we go. Oh, sharking in. This is such a stressful thing to play. I have to imagine where it's like one little mistake, one misclick. All your Zerglings could hit Banelings. And that spells disaster. 
Lair coming up quite a bit faster here for Thor. But again, the Roach Warren in that plus one on the way here. Six gas. This is Muta. Um, this has to be Muta, I think. I I mean, there's a Roach Warren. Okay, I guess it could not be. Um, nah, he's not fully mineral saturated. Uh, he's, I guess he's not mining out of that. So maybe, maybe it's less definitive that it's Muta than I thought, but... That's a lot of gas. It certainly... Ooh, that's a Baneling that's going to get a juicy, juicy connection here. And will Thor be able to exploit that? Maybe? Nah. Not just yet. There's still enough Banelings here. There's a little bit of a counterattack squad that's going here. But again, two Banelings in position. Should deflect this. So they're going to move in. That's a nice split. But it's going to even things out enough. Those Banelings do get picked off, but... Yeah, okay. There's the Spire. Coming on up the lair about three quarters of the way done here for fish because <clears throat> this is a tense moment for any zerg player going up to mutas right when that spire's on the way you want to be banking up money you don't want to be getting roaches here but with a little bit of pressure here not only can you maybe either exploit the fact that they're banking up money or b force them to spend that money and thusly lower the number of mutas that actually and do end up coming out initially um and it looks like that's going to be the play here from fish there's some spines coming up as well he wants this third base he softened it up a couple times in these attacks but i actually don't know if he's going to have enough here it's going to be tight if he if he right clicks on the base he might be able to go for it blows up those spine crawlers but what is there to follow this up actually still a decent amount of roachling bane one mutalisk on the way here As it looks like he's got... Oh, maybe. Is there more coming? Yeah, there's a little more coming. He definitely has the Roach lead, and if he stays out of range of this spine, he should be able to clear a lot of this up. Now, the 9 mutas are going to shove this back. The question is, is will he get the base first, and how much damage will get done here? The mutas get revealed. He's going to have to immediately react from that, or to that. He's going to go try and commit, take out as many of these Roaches as he can. I almost think he should be better off targeting down this base. Let's see what he goes for. It's going to be drones, it looks like. And you see what he can get. 15 drones have gone down in total. He's going to right-click that base. It's going to go down. In the meantime, we do see spores coming up. So he's preparing for when this army dies, which it will. And the mutas begin to head in for a counterattack. He's going to pick off some lings on the way out. And again, he just needs to buy himself some time here. He's got a bunch of spores on the way. He just wants to get as much damage as he can before the mutas clear everything up. Going to get a queen as well. Maybe another drone or two. Third base getting remade. There's a fourth base on the way. That one seems a little ambitious. A lot of spores. One, two, three. Three more coming up at the front. But he is going to go try and take out this base. And I think he's going to be successful in killing this fourth base of fish. But again, with that pick off on the base, I think he's okay with that. Actually, a decent queen count here. Going to start to ward this away. I still, I don't know if it's going to be enough. This spore is going to run to the edge of creep, but it can't really burrow past this. You can't transfuse a building that's under construction. He needs another spore to get, like, over here, and actually, he might have saved it. He might have saved it. Or looking for any little bit of damage that he can get here, but... With the spore and queen coverage, actually, this hydrogen might be a little exposed. He's going to dive on it. And I think he's going to get it. That's a nice pick off there for him. Hydrogen goes down. The first Hydras have just come out. He's going to pick off these building spores as well. Ooh, is he going to start committing to Queens? Nice transfuses. Critical transfuses. He's going to get a couple mutas for his trouble. Let's see. It is 11 mutalisks now. He can really start clearing up all of these overlords now, and that's going to be very nice. Lock down the vision. Whew, hive on the way, remaking that Hydra Den. Again, this queen count absolutely really a, a huge impediment to these mutas getting what they the damage that they want to get done done. And now there's lurkers on the field, and the thing about lurkers is that they murder everything which is on the ground. Um, meaning making the next transition here of Thor very difficult. 
Now, he's done a good job of fighting himself back. The supplies are, once again, pretty close. He's actually taken a worker lead as well. But, um, you know, it, it, there's a lot of factors here, right? We're not just looking at the worker count or the supply. Tech is also really important. And with a hive almost done and lurkers on the field, um, while Thor definitely sitting at the worker lead, I don't think that the tech is currently in his favor. These mutas are nice, but... They don't scale as well as things like a big lurker ball or once vipers get onto the field. Um, they start really, once they lose that map control, it can be very difficult for them to get much damage done in a straight up fight. There's three vipers and um, lurker upgrades on the way. So here we go. He's gonna he's sharking around, still looking for more damage. We have a roach counterattack heading into this unprotected third base. That might actually have to pull back those mutalisks. So let's see, only two drones have gone down so far. He is forcing a lot of missing mining time here. But again, the big thing here is the pullback, giving himself some breathing room while he gets up all of the things he wants. More Vipers. Finish those Lurker upgrades. Even going for, uh, excuse me, um, Infestors here, or Infestor Energy Upgrade. Oh my gosh, if you could Fungal and Parasitic Bomb a clump of Mutas, that might actually be the most brutal thing that's ever been done to a Mutalisk to be fungled and then parasitic bombed. That muta is going to fly to its death. Oh. Two zerglings got in. That's actually hilarious. But he gets in, he sees all of this tech. And I think that Thor knows that he needs, there's the Ultra Cavern, he needs to buy himself time, he needs to keep himself in a position where he has an army that can fight this on the field. Right now, again, Ooh, that's a big parasitic bomb. Can he get the spread off? Ticks are going down. That's a good spread. That's a good spread. Oh, needs to keep that mutalisk safe. It is actually going to fly into its buddies a little bit. These mutas do get softened up again. They do have really fast regen, though. And now these lurkers are going to get picked off. Eight more on the way. But, oh, you have to be so careful. There's another one. And he's flying away. Where's it? Great spread. There's another one. Great spread. Great spread. So far, Thor doing very, very well to not let these parasitic bombs just end his mutas as it is so easy to, to panic a little bit and let that happen. Now the lurker count is rising and rising. Two ultras are about to be on the field as well. As it looks like now might be the time for Fish to start to get aggressive. He's been cooped up on his half of the map due to these mutalisks for so long, but that may be about to change. So this is a lot of lurkers. I think it's too many lurkers for just a few Ultras to deal with. These Lings, it looks like they're going to be looking for a counterattack. There's Banelings as well, going to be looking to connect with the Hydras. But again, the massive impediment there is those Lurkers. Here we go, huge counterattack. But again, there are Lurkers in position, it looks like. Let's see, this is going to get dicey. He's going to pick off this base on one side, gets an Ultra on his way out as well. These Queens being very useful in the defense. So he's going to keep moving. Where are the Vipers? The Vipers are over here. So. I actually think he can kill this with the Mutas. Yeah, this is really good. He can kill this with the Mutas. Fish is going to be forced to trade out a hugely expensive piece of his army here for a base. And it looks like a little bit of damage as well. Where are the Vipers? They're on the way. Going to be looking to drop those parasitic bombs. But that's a lot of army that just went out. There are the bombs. Let's see. Absolutely everywhere. Needs to get those splits off. They're decent. Oh, oh. A few mutas go down, a lot more left in the red. As that should allow most of these vipers to make their escape here. A few more of these mutas are going to run into queens. But again, that was a lot of army. A lot of lurkers that fish just lost. Meaning that for a moment here, he is a little bit exposed to a ground-based counterattack. Nine more lurkers on the way, but they're not here just yet. That muta count, it looks like it's been whittled away at. Oh, no, there's still 24. I take it back. That's not really been whittled away at. It is super low, though. And the thing is, is that that cuts down on the reaction time that you were afforded with, or against, with Parasitic Bomb. As just a couple ticks will be absolutely brutal. Here we go. The bombs are going to land center mass. Oh. One more would do it, I think. Oh, that's, that's it. That's the one. Oh, that one was brutal. That one was absolutely devastating. Let's see that mute account cut down to nine nine mutalisks now on the field and that is a much less intimidating number some of these ultralisks are getting caught out as well two of them do go down and now it looks like the pendulum may have swung once again this time in fish's favor 
This is that exciting dynamic gameplay I was talking about with ZVZ. Here we go. A big engagement coming in. I think Thor really needs to stop this army, but I don't know if he can. There's so many lurkers here. And without the, the checkmate of the like air control of the of the mutas, I just don't know if these ultralisks can do it against this many of the lurkers. Ooh, these vipers are a little bit exposed. Needs to be careful with them. Looks like he's going for a big surround here. Fish, I think, smells that and is going to try and secure his escape. With the Mutas dead, these lur or these Vipers are, are largely pointless. Um, but again, Fish has a massive supply lead here. It looks like we are going to see a huge counterattack here. GG is called as Fish is going to take the victory. And with it, the series 3-2 in favor of Risen Competitive. What a game, what a match, what a series. Uh, that is going to conclude what we have for you here today. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I hope you had as much fun as I did playing and watching some awesome StarCraft. If you enjoyed it, I would love it if you would drop a follow and keep it locked, because I will inevitably be casting more StarCraft in the future. That said, have a wonderful evening, everybody, and take care of yourselves out there.